I want to finally introduce you to our next speaker. And he's a, a, a rather controversial character. I'm sure he won't mind me saying, or maybe he does mind me saying, but he's a rather controversial character. And hope not hate, just hate him. And that's a hell of an endorsement as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Julian Leppard is our councillor on Epping Forest Council. He worked his backside off to get that seat. I was with him through not much of it, I'll admit, but some of it. He made himself such a pest on the doorsteps around his area. And I do, honestly, I remember people saying, oh, God, not you again. <laughs> they really did. But it worked. And they elected him. And we knew he was going to win. And I was there at the count. And it was the most fantastic, fantastic night. Julian, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for your hard work. And I know you're going to be a brilliant, brilliant councillor for years to come. Julian Leppard, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. All right. Does this thing come off? Perhaps not. Well, I'm not sure if I can follow that, but uh, hello, good evening, and, and welcome everyone to the uh, 219 Four Britain Conference. Thank you. Now, what a difference a year makes. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I prefer these. How's that? Does this work? Yeah. Yeah, welcome everyone to the conference. As I was saying, what a difference a year makes. Now, uh, it was just 12 short months ago, you know, many of us gathered together in a, in a venue not too far away from here for the very first inaugural for Britain conference. And uh, we gathered together and we all shared together our hopes and dreams for a better and a brighter future for our country and our hopes and our dreams for election success for our new embryonic infant young political party uh, last year. Last year, also, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Katie Hopkins, or my matey Katie, as I call her now. <laughs> and, uh, and what do you know? You know, just one short year later, some of the election success, success that we all hoped and dreamed of, we've actually had a little bit, bit of it. So, uh, so here I stand before you, you know, bathed in the glory of election victory, with a fancy new title and a few letters in front of my name. And uh, Anne Weiss asked me to you know, talk to you a little bit about that and how that happened. Well, if you rewind, we won about 18 months and, uh, ago, and we all went through all the logistical things you have to go through to get a new, new local branch going, which we did in Epping Forest. So we did all that, got the branch going. One of the first things we did is uh, we made sure that the, uh, the local press knew all about it, so we could uh, be as famous and as well known as we possibly could. I didn't, exactly, I didn't have the, the paparazzi cant outside my doorstep for days on end, but we did get a bit of publicity just by setting up the, the local branch. We had a story in the local Epping Forest Guardian I've got here. Nationalist party set up in the district. New right wing party for Britain. Picture of myself, interviewed with uh, Eddie Butler. Eddie was the mastermind of, the, of our election win later on, you know, which he conducted with his usual expertise and aplomb. So well done and thank you to Eddie for that. I was also quite uh, seriously liabled in this interview because uh, they said that my rhetoric was softer than Eddie's, you know, so I don't mind me calling me a Nazi and a fascist, but that, that, I was really insulted by that and it really bothered me, so. And uh, a couple of weeks later, we had some more publicity for Epping Forest for Britain Branch. We had our first big meeting. Uh, another story here, there's a, you might, do, you might be able to say that from the meeting, there's Anne-Marie in the middle there. Very interesting headline on this meeting in the Epping Forest Guard, and according to this, Party has no place in this area, according to the local paper, Epping Forest, Epping Forest Guardian. Hmm. Oh, I don't know about that. Then we have some elections a few months later, and it turns out, as it happened, the party does have a place in this area, after all. <laughs> a place in this area in the form of a seat on Epping Forest District Council, thank you very much. So it shows all these left-wing idiots in the, in the newspapers now, doesn't it? You know, so much for them. So how did that happen? You know, how, how did we win this seat? Well, it didn't just happen by accident. You know, uh, we did have to work for it. You don't win elections just by posting your political opinions on the internet. And you don't, get, you don't win elections just by being right. Even though, of course, you know, we know that we are right, don't we? 
I mean, look at me, I'm 52 years old, I've never ever been wrong about anything, you know? <laughs> so we know we're right, but that's not enough. It's not enough to be right. You have to get out there and persuade people on the doorsteps that you're right so they'll vote for you and you win. And that's what we did. You know, we spent many months leaving the scene, warming up the walls. Nearest elections time, we spent a couple more months, you know, intensely canvassing again and again and again and, until, and we were saying, you know, they were sick of the sight of us, really. So, you know, look, yeah, okay, I'll vote for you, just leave me alone, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to watch Coronation Street, leave me alone. You know, and everyone worked really hard on that came, campaign, not just Eddie and myself, every, all the activists worked really hard. Because, uh, well, they didn't have much choice, really, because uh, any time we caught them slacking during the campaign, the campaign, Eddie and myself would beat them quite mercilessly, but, you know, firm but fair, that's what you've got to do. And, you know, when all said and done, when you do the work, you, got, you get just in politics as in life, you know, if you do enough work, you do get the rewards. And the reward that we got for the work we did was that going into election, the election night, as Anne Marie just said, we actually knew we were going to win. There was no doubt about it, because we'd had all, had all the canvassing returns from all the knocking on the doors, we knew we were going to win. The debate and the question, the conversation we were having before election night was, how big was my majority going to be? Not, are we going to win? And there was even discussion of maybe getting a you know, historic record-breaking win for a nationalist party. You know, or maybe an overall majority, 50% plus. That's what we were talking about. Now, in the, in the event, on the night, you know, I didn't break any records, but on the end of the night, I, you know, we did win you know, quite handsomely with 41% of the vote. And also, during the night, uh, Anne-Marie, as she said, she was there with us in the count, and we took the phone call from Hartlepool. You know, this is before my result came in. You know, with the incredible news, uh, Karen King, she'd romped home with 49% of the vote. 49% of the vote. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. Yeah. So not only did uh, I not break any records that night, I didn't even get the best result for our party on that night, on that same night. So. But I don't want to make it very clear, you know, um, I'm sure Karen's here, but... Uh, Oh, I no way am I any way bitter or resentful or envious of her getting a much, much bigger win than me on the night. <laughs> no, really, honest, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine. So that's that election. Talking of elections, we've got, uh, got another election coming up. We're not actually taking part in it, uh, but the general election's coming up. Which means there's going to be uh, lots of politicians on the television talking about Brexit, so uh, that make a change, won't it? <laughs> And uh, I don't have much time, I've only got two election predictions, general election predictions. The first general election prediction, I think this general election is going to be the most Christmasiest Christmas general election in the world ever. So if you like Christmas and you like politics, you're in for a treat. That's my happy prediction, my, my not so happy prediction about the forthcoming general election, is that regardless of the outcome, on whichever combination of Tory, Labour, Lib Dems and the Scottish so-called nationalists we get, after this election, it's not going to facilitate in any meaningful way Britain's departure from the European Union. Now, I'm going to take a wild and crazy guess here. I'm guessing that most of you probably voted to leave in 2016. <laughs> you know? Very bold of me to guess that, isn't it? But the bad news is, I think, I think all of us are going to be royally shafted by these people, regardless of the outcome of this general election. We're even going to get, going to get no Brexit, a fake and phony Brexit in name only type Brexit, or they're going to deliberately and willfully drag out the arguments and the debate for another f few years until they can force a second referendum on us. By which time, of course, you know, almost an entire generation of elderly British people who voted to leave in 2016 will now be dead, maybe in a few years, and thereby unable to vote again to leave the EU. And they'll be replaced at the ballot box by, you know, lots of brainwashed 18-year-olds and people from all over the world, of course. So that's very bad news, isn't it? You know, it's not very good. But the, the silver lining to that is that this scenario can only exacerbate to ever higher degrees, you know, the, the level of contempt the British public have for our establishment politicians. And that can only benefit, in the long run, a party like, like ours, can't it? Yeah. Yeah. But that's if, and only if, we apply the work ethic to our politics, as we did in Happy Forest and also in Hartlepool where Karen got a much, much better result than I did. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Honestly, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not bitter. So we apply the work ethic to our politics, and, so, and we get the rewards. So with that in mind, just to finish, I want to leave you with a, 
a vision that I had. I started talking about earlier party conferences. I want to share with you a vision I've had for a future for Britain Party Conference in the future, maybe next year, year after, the year after that. So in this vision, there I am at the Four Britain Party Conference. One of you, one of you comes up to me and says, oh, oh, Councillor Leppert, I remember you from the 219 Party Conference, you know, larging it and giving it the big one, strutting around the conference like your Charlie Big Potatoes, just because you had your, your fancy new title and your, your letters in front of your name. I remember you. But let me tell you something, Councillor. You're not being special in this party anymore. Because this party, the last few years, we've been campaigning really hard all over the country. And as a result, as a result, take a look around this room. Take a look around. Elected four Britain councillors all over the place, of which you are just one, my friend. Just one. So what that told me, didn't it? That told me. So there I am in my vision, you know, feeling a little bit chastised, a little bit humbled, but also feeling very, very proud, very proud indeed to be part of a party full of men and women who know what it takes to win, to get out there and win, and they're not, not afraid to do it. So let's carry on doing this. Let's carry on doing this. We'll get our awards. We'll carry on winning and winning and winning. And as Donald Trump said recently in one of his speeches, we'll win, we'll win so much that you will get sick and tired of winning, you know? <laughs> so please keep that in mind, you know, share that vision with me and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference and I'll see you all next year. Thank you very much. <laughs>